Hi everyone, welcome back to our podcast, Moving to Australia with Amitabha Deb. In today's podcast, we are going to be talking about Mara Agents, a specific branch within the DHA called OMARA, which is the Office of Migration Agents Registration Authority. And we'll talk in detail about their role in registering and overseeing over 4,000 migration agents who give migration assistance, continuous professional development of these agents, managing providers of CPD, and how they handle complaints against migration agents. Welcome, Amitava. How are you? I'm good, Arun. Good to see you back. How was your weekend? Uh, your weekend was okay. I moved to a new place, so it was a little hectic. Okay. How was yours? Mine was fine. Keeping kids busy just one more week before they start before school again. Before the school, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's start off with uh, what is Omara Amitava mm-hmm. and what is their primary role mm-hmm. when it comes to the migration agents. Okay. So let's take a step back. Every profession needs to have a regulatory body. So be it accountants, teachers, software guys, software engineers, traditional engineers. There has to be a body, a peak professional body, controlling and regulating the profession. Similarly, for migration agents, there is this regulatory body. It's the government regulatory body, OMARA. OMARA stands for Office of the Migration Agents Registration Authority. It's an Australian government authority that registers migration agents and regulates the migration agent's profession. How do they do that? Um, So they have Migration Agents Regulation Act and Migration Agents Regulation Book, which has the preamble. The um, It has the schedule of code of conduct that the ag- migration agents in their profession must follow. So that code of conduct has to be adhered to. And the office also assists people in you know, locating a migration agent, advice about fees, but also how they can complain about the agents if they feel something is foul. You mentioned the Migration Act. Mm -hmm. So tell us who can lawfully provide immigration assistance under this Act? Any person. So Migration Act 1958 says any person who gives immigration assistance must be a registered migration agent. It is defined in Section 276 of the Act. And it says that anyone who wishes to be a migration, a registered migration agent must have the knowledge and experience of migration procedure to advise or assist various people with visa applications and related applications, sponsorships, appeals, etc., etc. What about someone who has a certificate in migration law? Can they provide migration assistance? Are they also considered registered migration agents? They have to... Well, there is a procedure on how somebody becomes a migration agent, right? So you need to understand the steps for it. So the first thing is that they need to do the graduate diploma of migration law. Yeah, graduate. It's it's generally... A two-year course. It costs about twenty-five thousand to thirty thousand Australian dollars a year. And doing the certificate is not enough. They also have to do a capstone assessment. What is capstone assessment? Capstone is uh, is an assessment which tests students' central knowledge and skills. It ensures that they are in line with the intended outcomes of a study program. So migration law is a study program. But the capstone capstone, uh, process establishes that they have the practical knowledge to carry out the profession. So they have to pass that capstone. It it is more like a hands-on test. They'll have case studies and 
um, it it is it has two parts to it one is the online formative assessment and then there is a written assessment in the written assessment um, which is a three hour online open book exam supervised via zoom it consists of two components the first component has multiple uh, 10 multiple choice scenarios and two short answer scenarios and then in component two there are case study so case studies are very important they are real case studies and they are not repeated so one uh, has this open book to go and check and find the answers so it's an elaborate process after the completion of the study and the cost is uh, more than 2000 australian dollars so once you clear the exam and you get your certification and you're registered as a mara agent mm-hmm. do you have to keep re-registering yourself annually every year you have to do that every year you have to have 10 cpds continuing professional development units but at the same time there are other um, prerequisites uh, for example initially one needs to have an english competency uh, score of uh, ilts a score of 7 overall and no module less than 6.5 um need needs to have a professional indemnity insurance what is that that is, that is required for any profession in australia you need to have that indemnity covered so if, if somebody sues you you are covered same same with driving you have the and uh, compulsory third party third yeah. party it's similar to that now you mentioned that there's a way that people who are seeking migration assistance can complain about registered migration agents if mm-hmm. they're not satisfied with the services that would offer yes. or for any other reasons mm-hmm. now are there any circumstances under which the DHA can bar an individual from providing immigration assistance yes um it depends on the nature of the complaint it's so mainly based on complaints and if the complaints can be substantiated it depends on the um on the level of the um of the offense that has been um, committed and they can either be barred for a certain number of years or they can be uh, suspended for a certain number of years can they be prohibited from practicing yes they can be as well prohibited for life for life yes now is there an online register for migration agents so let's say i'm seeking mm-hmm. migration assistance i don't know whom to reach out to mm-hmm. is there a website that i can go to yes, and and yes. look for migration agents within yeah. my it's very easy area? it's very easy mara.gov.au go there and uh, look for an agent you can search by a location a country uh, or you can even search by the last name if you're looking for a particular person will that information tell me if that mara agent is currently registered yes and the history of his registration and also it will indicate whether they have been suspended or barred in the past the entire history will be there oh so you make a know. make a choice based on what you see So if somebody claims that he he or she that person is a Mara registered Mara agent you can always go and verify. Now what other powers does the Omara have to oversee the entire program because you mentioned that they are the ones responsible for managing and continuous professional development of the migration agents so what other powers does the Omara have under the Migration Act? Uh as as I mentioned earlier they can um in initiate investigation whenever somebody complains and then uh, they will see wha- the level of breach and depending on the level of breach there will be a sentence offered to the mara agents so mara agents have to be on guard all the time they have to follow the code of conduct i'll give you a few examples of the code of conduct sure. um one is when a customer signs up or e- even if uh, they uh, engage uh, with a mara agent for consultation there has to be a statement of service provided by the mara agent to the consumer 
the Mara agent also has to provide a copy of the consumer guide, which means the the customer who is a consumer can is entitled to know his or her rights. So it'll and that consumer guide is available in all the languages, major languages that are recognized in Australia. So one can go in and and it says, you know, if you're not happy, you can complain. Of course, a lot of cust- consumers can go and just complain. And it doesn't mean that every complaint will result in a successful uh, persecution. Now, you mentioned a while ago, go about continuous professional development mm-hmm. for Mara agent and also the Omara overseeing or managing the providers of CPD. Mm-hmm. So tell us what does CPD entail and why is that necessary for Mara agents? Or at least according to Omara, why is that important for them? In their the, the migration profession is such that the rules change all the time. So a Mara agent needs to be on top of all the changes all the time. So it is important to go through all the CPDs and Mara needs to be convinced that this person is continuously updating himself or herself to be uh, and to be aware of the changes. So that's why it's quite important. Now out of the CPDs, there are in total 10 CPDs one has to do. Out of these 10, five of them have to to be category A and category A means they need to be uh, face to face it cannot be private uh, study face to face meaning it can be face to face over zoom but it has to be a live CPT and the other five can be private study so you can download the material study and uh, sit for the exam are the CPTs held all across Australia or only in specific states for the Mara agents? It is online. Oh, online. Most, most of these, uh, due to COVID, are now these, these days online. Especially the ones, the Category 1, A ones, which need to be face-to-face, they are online. So it can be from anywhere. You do not need to go to any particular office. Coming to our final question for the podcast, mm-hmm. what would be your advice to people who are seeking migration assistance? So I think the first thing would be to do the research. So people seeking migration assistance, they have to go and ensure that the person is registered. Now, important thing to understand is that organizations are not registered. It's the people who are registered. So if there's a company and they say they are Mara agents, that's not true. The company probably has Mara agents in their um, network. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think it is important to find out which Mara agent will be allocated to you. So if they say we have Mara agents and someone will uh, you know, deal with your case, that's, that answer is not good enough. You need to understand who will be allocated to your case and is that person registered. If they say this person is registered, you go to mara.gov.au and look up if that person is still registered. Okay. Any other advice you have? And uh, no, well, well, this is in regards to the Mara agents, and of course, you can. Every person should do, do their own due diligence as well. There is no harm in doing your own research and get it verified. Uh, always ask for a statement of service when you um, engage a Mara agent. It is very important, and and it is one of the code of conduct that the financial transactions are documented and you get the statement of account for every single penny you pay. Does one have to be a citizen of Australia to be registered as a Mara agent? Yes. Only citizens of Australia or permanent residents can be Mara agents. What about New Zealand citizens who are here on the special category? They can be as well. Okay. And anyone who's providing assistance overseas, mm-hmm. do they now have to be registered under, under the OMARA? Um, that is not yet. It's being you know, discussed how they're going to... But that's a change that the government is planning to bring in. To do. It's not going to be easy to 
regulate because every country has their own framework, legal framework. So how are they going to manage? I don't know. But there are many, many Australian Mara agents who are based offshore. They live there and provide assistance. So I would say reach out to them. For example, I was in India for many, many years as a Mara agent. So there, there are many others who are based in India. Okay. All right, Amitabha, thank you for your time. It was nice talking to you. Thank, thank you for your you. advice. Everyone listening, thank you for your time and your attention. See you next week. Goodbye. Thank you, Bye-bye.